In the last lecture, we developed the dry adiabatic lapse rate, which is the temperature to which an air parcel will change if you lift it or cause it to uh, sink uh, in a dry adiabatic manner. Dry meaning that there's no water vapor in the air parcel. Adiabatic means that there's no mass exchange with the environment and no energy exchange with the environment. And we learned that if you lift an air parcel, uh, that its temperature will decrease at a rate of 9.8 degrees Celsius per kilometer, or alternatively, if you take an air parcel at altitude and uh, cause it to decrease in altitude, that its uh, temperature will increase at a rate of 9.8 degrees Celsius per kilometer. And that's uh, a reversible process. In this lecture, what we're going to try and do is try and figure out that same air parcel if you take it at its initial pressure and then you push it downward, uh, how will its temperature change? So we're looking to develop the relationship between dt and dp instead of dt by dz. And one of the concepts that we're going to identify is we're going to define a potential temperature. And potential temperature may seem strange at first, uh, but what it really is, is defined as the temperature that a dry air parcel will have um, if you move it dry adiabatically down to a pressure surface of 1,000 hectopascals. Now note that this pressure surface is not the standard sea level pressure. It could have been, uh, but in atmospheric sciences the convention has been to use 1,000 instead of 1,013.25. So if you use uh, if you move an air parcel to a pressure of 1,013.25, that is not going to be the potential temperature. The potential temperature will be the temperature that that air parcel achieves if you move it dry adiabatically to 1,000 hectopascals. So in order to solve this, what we're going to do is we're going to start off with a version of the first law of thermodynamics. And we're going to choose the equation that makes this calculation the simplest. And so we're actually choosing a form of the first law of thermodynamics that already has dt and dp in it. And then we can make the adiabatic assumption. Uh, adiabatic assumption tells me immediately that dq is equal to zero. So you end up with zero is equal to c sub p d because we're dry. So this is c sub p d uh, t, dt minus alpha dp. Uh, and we can basically solve for dt dp, and you'll end up with alpha over c sub p d. But we know from the ideal gas law that alpha is also equal to r sub dt over p. We'll make that substitution into that equation. And then we have dt on this side, t on that side, dp on this side, p on that side. We need to algebraically uh, manipulate this equation to get the correct terms on either side. We'll end up with dt over t, r sub d over c sub p d, and dp over p. And then we want to integrate this equation. We're going to integrate this equation from uh, our pressure, our temperature at 1,000 hectopascals, which is going to be defined as our potential temperature, uh, to a temperature that is up someplace in the atmosphere at pressure p. And we're going to integrate from uh, p naught to p. You could alternatively uh, flip those around, go from t to uh, theta, or uh, p to p naught, which I think is how I usually deal with this. Uh, but we'll go ahead and move forward in this direction. So the integral of dt over t is the natural log of t minus the natural log of theta. Um, we learned that the log of a minus the log of b is equal to the log of a over b, so that's the natural log of t over theta. And the integral on the right-hand side is r sub d over c sub p d. Uh, the natural log of p minus the natural log of p naught is equivalent to the natural log of p over p naught. And then uh, the, uh, this is also equivalent to the log of p over p naught raised to the r sub d over c sub p d power. So now, in order to solve for theta, we need to um, take the exponential of both sides, at which you'll end up with t over theta is equal to p over p naught to r sub d over c sub p d. Uh, move theta over here, pull this to the denominator. Um, you can actually uh, flip that around, and you'll end up algebraically with 
theta, the potential temperature, is equal to T, the temperature at the original P pressure, uh, times P naught over P times R to the raised to the power of R sub D over C sub P D. The nice thing about potential temperature is that it's conserved for dry adiabatic motions. You can calculate the potential temperature of an air parcel at altitude, and then if you move that air parcel dry adiabatically, either up or down, its potential temperature stays exactly the same, which gives us a way to um, easily uh, determine the temperature of an air parcel uh, with height by using a, a conserved variable. Uh, now, this is only possible because dq is equal to zero, which is the adiabatic assumption. Uh, and it's also true for dry air parcel. If you, become a, if you turn it into a moist air parcel and condensation occurs, that's a release of latent heat, and dq would no longer be zero, and potential temperature would no longer be conserved. And we will do many applications using potential temperature in this class.